Hello everyone, I'm Sibolot and this is the eCPCB firmware feature showcase. Once you connect your board to VIA, you'll have access to all the default functions that VIA gives you, such as key remapping, media controls, micro assignment, layer switching, and so on. The EC specific functions are contained inside of the EC tools menu. In this menu, we have two submenus, the actuation and calibration. The calibration submenu is where you find the bottoming calibration features that we've covered in the previous video. The noise floor calibration and show calibration data can be ignored by the average user because it's used mainly for debug purposes. Let's move now to the actuation tab. Here you'll see a couple of controls that we can manipulate. First of all, we have a mode selector that switches between APC and rapid trigger. Then we have a slider selection based on which mode we are into. Let's dive into the APC mode. APC stands for actuation point change, and it basically gives the ECPCB the ability to change the actuation and release level. This behavior is comparable to the one of a MX keyboard, the only difference is that you can actually decide where the actuation and the release happens in the key travel. To be noted that the left side of the slider is considered the resting position and the right side is considered the bottoming out. Because of the VIA limitations on the controls, there is no cross check between the two sliders. Therefore, it is important that you always have the release level at a lower value than the actuation. In order to change the values, you can simply drag the sliders. And once you've reached a value that you find comfortable, click Apply and Save Changes. Simply dragging the sliders will not apply the changes you must click the button to apply and save the changes. Rapid Trigger is a new way of detecting the actuation and release levels. It works differently than a normal actuation and release Boolean state system, in which we have an initial dead zone where the key is always considered not pressed. After the threshold is reached, the keyboard enters Rapid Trigger mode. It is comparable to other vendors' Rapid Trigger features. In this case, considering that the left side is the resting position and the right side is the bottoming out, as long as the key remains in the first half of the key travel, the key will never actuate. As soon as the key reaches the half mark, it will enter rapid trigger mode. The actuation and release offsets are controls based on the actual physical detection of the key state. It is strongly advised that you do not have those all the way to the left, but you have a little bit of values so that you can keep into account the noise of your key presses. Something like this can be an interesting way of setting up the rapid trigger. In this configuration, the very top of the key travel will not be registered as a key press, and as soon as this value is reached, from that point onwards, up until the bottom out, the entire region will be treated as rapid trigger. The actuation offset is an offset that is used by the keyboard to determine if you're still pressing down the key. The release offset is the analog but on the release. It is important that you understand that the offsets work in a centered way from the current position. So if you are at 2 mm of a key travel, the actuation offset of 250, for example, will trigger the continuous actuation beyond, let's say, 2.1 mm and the release offset is the analog. You can set different values based on your preference and how the keyboard reacts to your key presses. 
It is also advised that you do not have the initial dead zone offset to basically zero. It is always advised to have a little bit of play so that no false triggers are detected. In this configuration, moving the sliders does not apply the changes immediately. And as for the APC mode, you'll have to click and save the changes using the dedicated button. The only thing that is automatically applied is the switch between APC and Rapid Trigger if you select it through the mode selector. The values are stored in memory and they are persistent. Same goes for the calibration. So once you've set it up and you decided that the values are of your liking, you can just apply the changes and they will be stored on your keyboard. In case you flash a new firmware, the values will be zeroed and you'll have to go again into the uh, calibration as explained in the calibration guide and you'll have to select the values again. Thanks.